Welcome to this Hugin tutorial. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the table generator. We are going to use a simple example to demonstrate how the table generator can be used to generate the content of a conditional probability distribution. The table generator is simply a tool for generating the content of a conditional probability distribution from a uh, mathematical expression. Let's take a look at an example. As the example, let's consider a, a small three-node uh, network. So first we create uh, three uh, discrete chance nodes, like this. Then we will make uh, two nodes, parents of the, the third node. We'll, uh, Rename the, the first node here, uh, x1, the second node, x2, and uh, the third node as y. Now we have the structure of the model uh, set up. x1 and x2 are parents of y. Let's take a look at the states of the variables in the model. So I select uh, x1, right click, open tables. And now you can see uh, x, the table of x1. It's a node without any parents, so it has a marginal distribution. But if we want uh, y to be uh, the sum of x1 and x2, then we need to make sure that x1, x2, and y are what we call numerical nodes. That is, the states of the nodes uh, represent uh, numerical values such that we can add them together. Now. In order to uh, support the table generator and building expressions for the generation of CPTs, uh, the tool has something called node subtypes. Let's take a look at the possible node subtypes. There are four different uh, subtypes of the discrete uh, nodes in uh, Hugin. And these subtypes are uh, referred to as label nodes, Boolean nodes, numbered nodes, and interval nodes. So let's start with the second one here. Boolean nodes are nodes that represent uh, truth values, false and true. So these types of nodes have two states. The first one is interpreted as false, the second one as true. Numbered nodes are nodes that uh, represent uh, increasing sequences of numbers, and these can be integers or reals. Interval nodes represent disjoint intervals on the real line, so these are the types of nodes we'll use, uh, we'll use in discretization. And then we have uh, the last type of node, which we call uh, label nodes. That's kind of all nodes which are not Boolean numbered or interval, where the states of the nodes are simply interpreted as uh, labels. In the example, we will assume the the variables x1, x2, and y are all representing integers. So as you can see, if you double click on, on one of the nodes, they are of type uh, labeled. We want to change this to, to type uh, numbered. So we're going to do that for, for each of the nodes. Now they are all of type uh, numbered. And if you look at uh, x1 and, and y, and also uh, x2, then you can see by, by default the states uh, are 0 and 1. So let's assume we want x1 to represent 0 and 1. We may want uh, x2 to represent uh, 1, 2, 3. So we'll just change the, the values of the two first states and add an additional state. Now we have three of them. And then we can look at the uh, distribution for, for y or the table for y. Here we have the parent configurations and here we have the, the values for, for y. Now it's up to the user to make sure that uh, there is a state of the child y, which reflects all possible uh, sums in this case of x1 and x2. So we want y to be the sum of x1 and x2. And this means that the states of y should reflect all possible sums of x1 and x2. And here we can see this is not the, the case because we have x1 take as the lowest one, a value 0, x2 uh, 1. So the, the lowest possible value is, is 1, which is fine. But then if we go to the, 
the highest possible value, which is three plus one, that gives us four, which is not a state of y. So therefore we need to add some additional states for y. I'll just do that by pressing this plus button. And now we can see the, the table of, of y. It has as uh, all uh, ones, but the, the variable uh, y has as states all possible sums of uh, x1 and x2. Now we could start filling this uh, table with zeros and, and ones to reflect that the CPT encodes the sum of x1 and x2. In this example, it's not so bad. We, have, we don't have that many numbers to, to set in uh, 30 here, but if the variables x1 and x2 would have uh, 10 states, uh, we would have many more values or to, to fill into the CPT and it would be uh, not such a nice thing to do. So instead we would like to be able to specify that the CPT of y is the sum of x1 and, and x2. In order to do that, we have to enable the use of uh, what we call expressions. So we press uh, functions, expression, switch to expressions. Now you can see the the layout of the table has changed. Here we have all uh, parts filled with uh, question marks and it's gray and we can't enter any numbers. Instead, what we have here is a new uh, input line where we can define an expression. Now there are two ways to, to set the expression. And uh, when we are specifying an expression for the child uh, distribution, then we refer to uh, the parent notes, notes by their name. In this case, it's uh, the name is uh, x1, and uh, the name of the other variable is uh, x2. So what we could do here is we could simply uh, write the uh, expression that we want to encode, or to use to encode the CPT. So we write uh, the name of the first note, x1, and then plus the name of the second note, uh, x2. Then when I press uh, return, you can see that it, the expression turns uh, blue and we have now a valid expression. If I have missed uh, spelled one of the note names, then uh, you'll have this red uh, color indicating that the expression is invalid. So now we just specify that uh, this expression should be used to generate the content of the table. What the tool will do is it will map all parent configurations through this expression and then evaluate that to some value, which would map to a state of the child node. This has not uh, been done yet, but in order to generate the content of the table, we say functions, expressions, show as table. Once I select this menu option, uh, this calculation is performed and you can see now the the content of the CPT has been generated. If we uh, compile uh, the model and go to uh, run mode, open the monitors by selecting all the nodes and right click to show uh, monitors, then you can see uh, this distribution on the, on the uh, nodes in the network. If I select the value one for X1, you can see that the why the distribution for y reflects the, the possible sums once x1 is known to be uh, equal to 1. And if I take a value for x2, then uh, y is instantiated to the value that corresponds to the sum of x1 and x2. We can go back to edit mode. Um, there's a different way of setting the expression, and that is to go to functions, expression, uh, build expression. The build expression menu will open the expression uh, builder panel uh, where you can get uh, more help in setting up the expression. So if I select here the, the expression, you can go up here and see there are different uh, function categories. The function categories uh, depends on the uh, subtype of the child, uh, here why. And for the, the functions, we have different uh, functions that we can use. We have used uh, the summation, if we want to make a nested expression, we, we press here and we can have another expression. We can put in just for the fun of it, uh, zero plus zero, apply, okay. Now you can see here in the yellow part, the, um, the expression is now zero plus zero <laughs> plus X2. It's not really that uh, interesting an expression. We can go here and we can, we can also uh, type the expression or adjust it back to what it was before, build it. 
um, applied, show as table, um, okay, close, and so on. So that was a simple introduction to the uh, table generator and how it can be used to build a simple sum expression. You can build much more complicated expression and we'll revisit that in a, another video. This ends the tutorial. If you want to watch or read other tutorials on the Hugin software, then you are more than welcome to visit our website, www.hugin.com.